Chick. Who, who wants to do the uh, the official uh, welcome to the new signal, everybody? Let's let Mitch do it. Okay. Welcome to the new signal, everybody. My name's Nat, <laughs> and I've been sitting up all day working real hard. But I know Preach, you're gonna brother. like my tunes. I've been uh, working on my voice, changing it up. And hope you like it. I think it's pretty sweet. It can go kind of like this, or it can kind of go like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, listen to wow, me. Nat. My name is Matt. Nat, man, that's awesome. <laughs> Nat, you got, some, you got some moves. I've been working on it. I see I can change it up. I don't know if I'm Nat, Nat, or Nat, Nat. <laughs> so uh, what were you up to today? What, what were you up to today, to Nat? Uh, what were you up to today, Nat? <laughs> <laughs> well... Try to wake up Gabe all day. Oh, shit. Motherfucker sleeps all day, just lazy. <laughs> buying colored Damn bulbs, man. going to bed. Dad, Wakes dude. up, buys some more colored bulbs. <laughs> I do. Eats White Castle, That's goes right. to bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then that took about four hours. Then I just tuned a guitar for two hours. 
until I got it right. That's true. I saw you sitting on that couch for a long time just being like, where's the hole? Where's the hole? <laughs> where's the hole? There's a couple holes. Oh, are we back to the hole stuff? Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, just search for it the hole. Start, it all, it all you know, start. My, you know, Nate's mo- I'm, my motto is just search for the hole. And I learned that's, that That's from a great Kate. motto. Yeah. And, uh, and then I tried to tune this cajon, and I realized you can't tune the fucking thing. You just, like, play it. So that, yeah. took, that took an hour. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> wait for... Oh, yeah, come on, yeah. Mike. Come on, Mike. We're waiting. <laughs> what do you mean I'm... You're next. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Gabe, how do you like having people in your basement? <laughs> I already said... Oh, dude. It's oh, did like you? Awesome. Okay, yeah. sorry. Uh, it's an honor. I love you guys. I'm glad oh, yeah, you guys that's are right. Here. I'm sorry. I asked the one question you've already answered. <laughs> Fuck it. What the fuck, man? That was Trauma horrible general. interview <laughs> skills right there. Yeah, dude. You already forgot. Amazing. You're making me go back in circles, and I'm not even drunk. <laughs> so tonight in the house, tonight in the basement, we had uh, we had a big group tonight. We had, uh, obviously, Mr. Gabriel Palomo on the drums. We have uh, Mr. Mike Norris back on the vocals. Didn't have to go to show this tonight. No show today. Then we got the uh, <laughs> Sophie and Darren there on the love seat. <laughs> Sophie and Darren didn't didn't want a picture to get together today. That was, that was a small small bit of news there. Hey Sophie, Darren, you want a picture together? No, no, no. <laughs> and uh, oh, you're out. I'm okay. your engineer, Nat. We didn't mean it that way. We didn't, we're just being professional, you know. Oh like, no, I'm just trying to be. It's, it's funnier if I paint a picture where you were yeah, just being yeah. mean to each other. We, okay. <laughs> and we got a guest. We got a guest tonight. Yes, we do. <sighs> Give it up. On for the drums, we got Mr. Mitch. I don't know your last name, Mitch, Mr. Harris. Mitch Mitchell. <laughs> How about that? I'll take it. Mitch Mitchell. Harris. Great. I have, I have a funny story. Uh-oh. Okay. Hey. Oh, Mitch. When I was Jumping a kid, right I saw Jimi Hendrix uh, on MTV. Right. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant in person. I was like, this is going to be good. <laughs> oh, now what? I now am, what? I am 44, <laughs> I know. not no, I'm quite, si- yeah. you know, 64. <laughs> but, uh, and do you remember those old videos? Mitch Mitchell looks a little bit like something's wrong with him. Who's Mitch what do you mean, Mitchell? like the drummer? Like, he's a drummer. Mentally? Oh, really? Yes. Uh, yeah. He looks like there's there's a problem. A little off. And he's a little off, and he's like a virtuoso drummer. Yeah. Is he? No, I mean, I mean, well, I, mean I love, at I love the his show? drumming. No, just like in the, you know, it's like a, it's a video of them playing live. Oh, okay. You know that it was like, you know, Purple Haze or something like that. But and he plays the sticks kind of up here, right? He's a former jazz so he kind of plays almost like a crawl, like a pterodactyl mm-hmm. thing. And so it's a weird hand gesture, and he kind of has this funny. And so I was like, wow, not only is Jimi Hendrix amazing, but he found this like savant drummer, who like, you know, doesn't look like he can communicate well in other ways but he's just like this amazing drummer Do you, you guys you guys yeah. seen those videos right yeah well, no, oh yeah he totally. plays, he, he, oh yeah just the like, music itself yeah. and then i and i thought that for years i thought that he was like special oh, basically and then one day i saw you know later he was being interviewed as a young as an older man he's like this total English gentleman, like, oh, right, when I first met Jimmy, he was a lovely lad. Like, he's just totally... <laughs> really? And I was like, oh, he's just on a lot of drugs. And he <laughs> contorted his face a lot. But I literally thought he was a special needs Spe- Because of the way he, hold, he held, well, he held his drumsticks. I have to and watch the way he, I have to he watch contorted it. his face. Really? And, I mean, I love his drumming. He's one of my favorite drummers. I mean, he comes he, up... He, he's like a... He comes up with, like, solid, good, like, sort of so recognizable good. beats... But he's also got this sort of like wild element to him, like kind of, exactly. kind of like a little bit like Keith Moon in that yes. sense, like just yeah. kind of he spazzes out on the yeah. drums, just enough, but a but, little more groovy. But he can play that blues groove totally. too. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But it turns he's out a he's, great drummer. He's just regular. So I'll take it, but that's not my last name. But nah, that's I, cool. I admire that's, him. Okay. That's cool. Well, as far as the new signal is concerned, you're Mitch Mitchell.
Mitch is his name. <laughs> In a world. <laughs> Harris, right? Yeah. That's your last That's name. Right. That's my last and, name. And uh, Mitch, Mitch my I, I met him through uh, my friend Yuri. Who, uh, Yuri's a... Uh, the guitarist in my band, uh, The Streets on Fire, and that's how I met Mitch. And uh, just had a baby. Yes. Yep. Not the band. Congratulations, the but yeah, Yuri just had a baby, which is awesome. Sasha and uh, Sasha James. Like an awesome name. Ale- Alexander. Oh wow! <laughs> God, all of it is amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, love. I, I, my I met uh, Mitch, uh, you know, through the music scene, and what's cool is. Our second album, The Streets on Fire, Mitch helped us produce it, which was amazing time where we were like all over the place, out of control. And Hey, I, I love that record, by the way, and I see it in the corner there. It's a great piece yes. of art. Fucking love that piece of art. The gorilla in the white suit with a red tie. It's yeah. Just, when I saw that, that melted my heart. I was like, this project just all came together. When I saw the yeah. cover, everything worked and, for and, me. And th- thank you, Mitch. You, you helped it. Dude, it was super fun. Come together. So you Mitch, you you're, glued it. You're originally a drummer, though. Is that correct? I am mostly all, I would say, drummer. I'm just a lucky... I'm just a drummer with ideas who doesn't get paid for my ideas that often. <laughs> and then, our, so how did you get into producing... Producing. So actually, let me first take one step back. Yeah. In your mind, what is a producer? Like, what does a producer do? Right. And that's a bit... You know, there's a lot of different ideas. So yeah. I'm not technical. I, I, I really dislike and get disinterested when I have to hook up too many things together. So I'm not an engineer at all, but I noticed as I was coming up in the drum circles in Indiana yeah. and there's like echelons and you can make it through bars and then you can make it through indie bands. And then um, John Cougar Mellencamp actually is from there. And so he made it big. And so his band was able to have these really nice studios around. So you could actually get... Wait, where this, is John Mellencamp from again? He's from Seymour, Indiana, which is just outside of Bloomington, Indiana, oh, like oh, about an hour okay. and a half south. And, um, and so they had like... California, New York level gear, right? But and in so, the middle of Indiana, in the middle of Southern Indiana, and that's awesome. And so, so he, he kind of he kind of uh, stayed true to his. He kept he, he, a presence in the. He, he lived there. He lived in Seymour. Oh wow! He's, he like still lived there. So his band, and he's kind of a prick in a, in a in a way that works totally for him. He's got that kind of attitude, and yeah. he's a true true to I think true to form guy. But he wasn't ever out. But his guitarist had this. Mike Weinchick had this uh, studio, and then he had a B studio for like freaks like us to hang on. Because <laughs> wow. he realized after a while, the indie rock crowd would get in there and kind of fuck up the gear a little bit. You yeah. know, we're wow. like yeah. fucking with it a lot. So he made it a B studio so that we could fuck around. That's and, cool. And then this guy was an engineer who. So, anyways, I played a couple things there, and you're like, oh wow, stuff sounds good, and maybe. You know, you were still thinking you're going to get signed or something. You're, they're, they're, it's a college music town, so there's a lot of really good bands, and then there's a lot of like college dropouts, and it's a weird, freaky, punk rock Southern Indiana town. So I started to watch these gigs, and then I was brought in. I I got on a tour with this band. Um, this guy, it was in the Lemonheads. He was like an early member. He was in the Blake Babies. He was part of that early Boston scene, and he was hmm. from Indiana. So he ended up going back to Indiana. He had a record deal, and then he was like shedding his band they were growing apart and so he, as a 19 year old he picked me up because we were just in circles together and he heard me and liked what i did so i was able to go on tour and and get out there and be like oh maybe i can move my way up the ranks you played like, drums for them yeah so i'm just kind of setting the scene for how i understood what a producer does yeah. sorry i'm wrong no no it's cool so that was hear this. that was like wow so there you could actually get on a like people could come to town with actual record get you know t- um contracts and so i was able to tour and then once that reputation got out that i was like a touring drummer this guy who was the lead singer of the zero boys which is a probably the most famous punk band from indiana because you know on on classic punk albums they'll be cited they were definitely a, an anomaly and um zero boys zero boys and paul mayhern is that he, he ended up being this super in, you know interesting yogi and like you know um i think he's a sufi now and we became friends he was a lot older than me but he was like young when he was in that punk band and he was a little bit of a savant and um hmm. but he got super into music and he became a very good producer so he would bring me in to do studio sessions every now and then wow and um to play yeah he's like yeah. and that's what producers do they're like i got a cu- i got a couple guys who can like make right, this groove right, right. make this groove you know guys you trust so i was like well what does paul do and he definitely had some element of like engineering but he's mostly like an idea guy he yeah. was really like guiding the ship of like right, stop that right. focus on this let's do this he had great ideas he's a good mix and you know like he knows how to listen to stuff and kind he, of see like okay this is go- this is what you're going for yeah. 
you got a bunch of ideas going on here. I think yeah. this is the thing that. Yeah, I mean, he's worked yeah. with like now he's he's worked with like Iggy Pop. He's worked with a lot of great bands wow. and Americana bands. He's like Mellencamp's main guy now. He's just a wow. great open-minded guy, and he actually runs that studio now. He calls it the White Ark. <laughs> he's real hmm. spiritual, <laughs> um, and he's a lovely person. He's it he was really great. So through that, I kind of was like. I think I know what a producer does. Right. And uh, I moved away from Indiana and just abandoned music because, um, to be honest, I realized that as a drum, I mean, for any kids listening out there, <laughs> if you're just an instrumentalist, the, the 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 actual business side of it is set up to gut you. Well, of course. Right. But I was yeah. 19. I was growing up listening to Led Zeppelin. I was like, I'll be in a band and they'll pay me money. For, for people who don't do. know, what does that mean? Like, the, it's set up to gut you. So it's like, in terms of percentage of points of what you can make on a record, like you get paid for the session as the drummer or as yeah, a musician. That's all you get. And that's like you it. Get, that you get day. like a day rate. A day rate. Yeah. yeah. Day rate. And, and then, then if any... If pe- other people make the if royalties. If anybody writes the song, they get paid um, the most. And then people who are credited on the song and, and like points for maybe doing a, a little bit of arranging or something, right. they get fractions of it. So Bernard Purdy is a good example. He's a you know, famous drummer. He did the... Um, in the evening... You mean the Led Zeppelin song? Well, yeah, but that's his shuffle. It's the Purdy really? shuffle. Really? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Google per, per, Bill Purdy, Purdy shuffle. He's an amazing guy. This big African-American guy who's just got a groove. I mean, he's played on these bazillion albums. The guy, right. the guy's feel is fucking unbelievable. But he talks about it. He's like, I was ripped off for so many years. Wow. People would be like, hey, Birdie, the producer would ask me, can you come up with a way to start this song? And it's like soul, soul, famous soul songs that you know, and they're like, the beginning is amazing. You're like, yeah, that's an arrangement. And so it's like, he kind of helped write the he song. He did, and he got paid but nothing. But he, he didn't get credit for, he, or paid for nothing. writing the song. With, yeah, yeah. He's, he's actually gone, like he's said, I went half my life without realizing I should be demanding that I get some, like, that's what I was doing. It's obvious, and I didn't. So it's kind of set up, so nobody will teach you that. People, you know, the, the songwriters and the, and the people involved just, expect you not to ask much.
so when you're talking about Jimi Hendrix, you made me think about um, if there's any art, like if there was any band or artist that you could see that you were like that you were never able to see oh, live. Great question. Who would it be? Love this question. Hendrix would definitely be one. Like if I w- was able to see him. But is it, is it somebody that was alive while you have been alive, or somebody who's you've never wasn't you just alive? Never had the chance. You would never have had yeah, the chance. Like to see Duke them. Ellington or in something, their prime. You know? Yeah, like Miles. Da- even Miles Davis, like yeah, like tough. in their prime or like. See, yeah. I even had particular shows that I would have liked to see. Like I would have liked to see the first Velvet Underground show at a fucking high school in New York, oh, Long yeah. Island. That's a good. I would have liked to seen what the fuck that was. <laughs> yeah, Velvet Underground. That's a good one. Do they got through, the got through the set? No, you know the without think, fighting. <laughs> <laughs> who's anyway, singing who this song? What about I wrote you? the damn song. Darren, what would you? What, what would off the top of your head? What would you have liked? Roy to see? Harper. No, no. Well, I, actually, I would. Yeah, I haven't seen him actually. I know. He's I'm, still going. He's I'm still not cooking. joking. He's still going. Yeah, Echo and the Bunnymen. I still haven't seen. Mm. That's the band I've always regretted missing. Yeah, they they, they toured not. Like, I know. So many still. Like, yeah, miss them. Now it's like a hundred bucks probably. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Echo and the Bunnymen back in the day. They're still good. You know. My first concert ever was uh, John Cougar Mellencamp. Ow. Uh, wow. Seeing in a big arena in Montreal. And I'm from Indiana, so shout out to the Coog. Yeah, yeah shout the out to the And I, I must have had a couple of drinks, but I was a teenager, and I went there with a friend of mine and his girlfriend. All I remember is we had, I'm not kidding you, we had the very last row <laughs> of the arena. Like there was, the only thing behind us was brick wall. <laughs> So I could barely see him, but for some reason I was like, I think this is cool. And then like, t- 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 like I'm twenty minutes, sure. twenty minutes later, I was puking in the bathroom. I think I was like my first time smoking weed or something. <laughs> I came back and I like reeked of puke up against the wall. What, did you puke on yourself? I was like, no, I puked in uh, the bathroom, man. Okay. On myself. Well, you said you reeked of puke. Well, I just puked, you know. Okay. Just it's not like I carry a you know a cleaning system, but you know, I did my best. I you know I tried my best. Wow. Why are you picking on my puking, man? <laughs> and, and then you were like, "Yeah, dude." And, you're like, and then wow, I get back. To, on, I get back to his puking, dude. Yeah, He's why? talking about <laughs> cool Melikamp. That's okay. really more important. And I couldn't. I could barely make out. I was like, I think those are his songs. Like I could kind of hear them, but it was pretty far. So it wasn't very funny. It wasn't very. Spiritual. And then you're like. Best no. show ever. <laughs> but the best show. <laughs> no, it was a horrible. It was like a laughable show. What was the best show? Oh man, there's been a lot. There's been a lot. All right, give I'll, us your I'll, best. I'll keep it at the. I'll keep it at the first, and and we can go around the table if you guys want to share okay. your first. Okay, I got mine already. Okay, what's your best show? Santana. <laughs> best show? Best show. I've never seen. I, I, actually, I, I would, I've because, never seen him. Because here's yeah, my experience. I've never seen him either. It, like it, it, was in, it was in '92. I was in Schaumburg, and my boss, the guy I was working with, he was like, "Hey, dude, let's go to a concert. Let's go see Santana." Santana. And they're like, we're like, "All right, cool." And we went out. It was like. By Sears, we're you know in, out in Schaumburg. I, f- I forgot what venue was out there, but we drove his Corvette out there. we like, it was in a Corvette convertible, like going through the fucking streets of uh, you know the suburbs. Then he's like, "Yeah, man, fucking Santana, bro." I'm like, "Dude, I'm like, this is awesome, dude." I'm like, "All right, dude, this is." I've heard this music since I was a kid, like you know at the weddings. <laughs> at the quince at the quinceañeras, you know, at the at the parties on the yeah. south side, it's like that's him. I go, that's dope. I got so wasted. I was like, oh, you know, little known it's... fact: the in Woodstock, actually, his Woodstock set is amazing. The drummer is fucking nineteen years old. Really, his drummer at that time was at nineteen. The time. Wow, in Woodstock, man, that yeah, what? I forgot his name, but yeah, yeah, he's a great, awesome band. Nineteen years old, yeah, Jeez. Carlos Santana. Um, Nat, what about got you? a Nash. black magic woman. Are we doing favorite show or first okay, show, favorite? So show? I don't know if this this wasn't a tech. <laughs> so I got mostly like memorable shows. They didn't, didn't necessarily have to be like the best shows ever. So as an example, uh, so when Beastie Boys were making Ooh. their were making their comeback with "Check Your Head," I, yeah. I just they, watched when they a first video released of that. It was that, amazing. It looked amazing. I would have. They loved played to see that show. at a high school gym in Moline, Illinois. And I went to see them, and they were just playing. It was just like a shitty gym show. Like they just had like a couple of PA speakers, and they and like it wasn't even really that packed. Like wow. because people still, you know, people they they'd been off the radar for a long yeah. time, right? Yeah. So like, uh, but they came out. They fucking rocked like a license to ill, you know, like 
let it go, let yourself go. They did, they did License to Ill, too. Yeah, oh, they did most, like, those were the songs that everybody knew, right? Yeah, right. And so then right. Check Your Head was kind of these new songs that they were playing, you know? And uh, that was, like, it was probably technically, like, not the best show ever, but it was super memorable because it was, like, I saw the Beastie Boys in a gym with yeah. like with like a hundred other people. Wow, that's crazy. Well, because I just uh, I got in a little YouTube hole of it, and there's a Check Your Head proper show like in like Scotland or something, and it looks amazing. They were they had you know Mixmaster Mike doing his shit, and they would like break into like their punk stuff, and then go back into. It looked like it was a totally stellar show, but that must have been the refined. Yeah. It was super fancy, like totally done out one of the best shows i ever saw in my life was p funk all stars george clinton and you know who came out george clinton ice cube no, <laughs> no. <laughs> keep keep guessing he played with those guys and he's super uh, famous. Bootsy Collins? Bootsy Collins. yes yeah of course so first boots but first this is the most genius stage move i've ever seen in my life first just like they're playing for like half an hour an hour all of a sudden and he doesn't come out and all of a sudden you see his like giant. He has that giant pedal thing, you know, the effects pedal, and it comes out, and everyone's like, "Ooh, what is it?" Like, comes out, like, 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 like his crew brings out. Oh, okay. I thought it was like floating down. Yeah. From, from the, on, from. <laughs> no, his crew just like walking out, and then and then something else comes out, and like they slowly load up his gear. It takes a couple songs, and the crowd's like, "Oh, I'm moving." Meanwhile, the are they also, jamming the whole? They're time? They're jamming the whole time. The crowds. It's a mostly black crowd. It was, an, it was like this old amphitheater in indie. I was just, I just been introduced to them in high school. I'm just like wow. And then all of a sudden going, and then finally, in like five song build up, he walks out, doesn't turn to the audience, picks up the bass and plays with the bass to his back to the audience for fucking three songs. Wow. And wow. at the end, he wow. finally turned around. And when he finally turned around, the audience went in fucking insane. Wow. <laughs> insane. And I that could was totally all he that. did. Wow. And it was like if you can't. I mean, even if the band is old or whatever, I want to hope for a great show. I want to hope right, for great right, interaction. Right. This is P Funk Allstars. They were way past their prime. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen, and they knew how to because the audience. It's a com, to, it's a it's a communion play. with the with if the audience. Yeah. The band have a communion. Yeah. It's a spiritual, medicinal Connection. moment. Yeah. Oh yeah. The whole totally. point of having a cathartic moment in a live show is to see right. and experience in live time the band.
Do you so. notice these public television performances they have of like 50s bands, 40s, 50s and 60s bands really performing for like audiences that are now like 80 and 90 mm-hmm. and they're in like, you know, a, a nice small theater and they get up and it's like, you know, they're playing La Bamba or whatever. And oh, yeah. Like everybody. Out, yeah. And, you know, the, they just got shot to the audience with their eyes open. They're just like La Bamba. Yes. <laughs> That was my I've youth. Seen those videos. And it's, like, and it's wow. going to be ours next. I, it's going to be Depeche <laughs> Mode. Yeah, we're already shit. there. Yeah, you know, we're they're already gonna, there. And we're you there. go and see them, and you're just like, Depeche Mode is looking at you, and you're looking at them, and <laughs> we're all like right. looking at each other, being like, we're all a lot older. I mean, when we went to hey. Ravinia and saw Duran Duran, like that, that was like a total old person concert. Like people are just yeah. sitting on the lawn, yeah. having wine. And then, you know, Duran's like, the reef. Flex oh, is man. it only child? Yeah. See, I, 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 and it just felt like, uh, I, not if you could have seen them in the eighties, like when they were like in their, in their prime. prime, that would have been the shit, you know. But like now, you're just kind of watching them, and and you're old, and they're old, and it's just and they're just like that reflex. Yeah. For like the- <laughs> I mean, they're good, but it's a li- it, it is a little sad. Yeah, you got you to keep writing new stuff. That's what it is. No, I don't well, mean, but you don't want to that. hear the new stuff. Yeah, just, they just right. like you know, you did a good thing. Goodbye. Like, here and here are some songs from our new album, and everyone goes and you, you know, know it's like, yeah. gets a drink or Pop goes to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! And then all of a sudden, the reflex. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> ah, it's one song, and then you spend five hours in the parking lot trying to get home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think like I say, I don't like the movie. I hate it. Everybody kept talking about moving to Chicago, and then I got there. I had no idea you didn't, you couldn't see the band. I was like, why the? It was like Hollow Notes. I was like, why the fuck Dude, am I here yeah. if I can't see? And I was like, well, I guess does it matter? And I was like, I think it does. I don't want to have a picnic. Dude. And you gotta like sorry. take Next a train. I want to pretend like I'm seeing yeah. the band. I'm sorry, but just like I, the just whole. If if, like if that's you're gonna real. design a concert venue and you're gonna like you know, dude, I want to be able to wherever I'm sitting. Even see if I have a best. picnic table the in the back, I want to see the stage. see their awkward old yeah. bodies. No, we got a video, video down. screen. You know, it's like you're. Yeah, it, I, I think Ravinius, the, the whole concert. I'm like, dude, I will never go back there again. It's just the worst concert. Yeah. Venue. How about, the how about the next concert? You and I will protest it outside. <laughs> Yeah, and then Boo, get in the cars. Go home, people. Yeah. Boo. Are you yeah. gonna have that? Well, and then yeah. and then can you find that? out when you can I have some of that food you're gonna throw away. <laughs> and then when you find out when you get there that like people like camp out like oh yeah. first thing in the morning to try to get those primo spots on Do the lawn. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, dude. It, there's like a whole game to it. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then people That's bring out their dining game. I'm their sorry. dining That's tables the and all this. Oh my god. Yeah. They've got like dude. It's out of control. I'm like, dude, really? I go. You can't even see the fucking stage. I go, I came here to, I want to see the artist. I want to see the performers. I want to see the... I just didn't associate right. music with like, I mean, I love eating and I don't mind some posh behavior, but oh, it's something yeah. about having like a dining cloth and table and I just kind of <laughs> found it disorienting. I was just like... It is. I didn't know where to look or what to do. I'm like, should we pretend right. the band isn't playing? They're like, actually here, do we interact with them? Do we not? Right. It's just disorienting. Dude, it is. I'm like, should I have brought more roast beef? <laughs> Like, what am I supposed to do exactly here? You're right, dude. It looks it's, it's just satisfied. Weird. I'm I'm just confused. I, I am. Dude. I was just more confused. Well, and then, like, if you go there and you come with nothing, like, you feel like a loser. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, I guess. Like, oh, I'm everyone's lonely. like, wow, you okay. Don't we, have your own china. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, right. Uh, dude. You don't I'm have ca- candles. I and, brought a blanket. Plastic silver. My napkin like, doesn't have my initials on it. I should have brought my bar mitzvah <laughs> napkin. So, so you I have know my what I'm car seat. About, yeah, dude, totally. I yeah, was dude, totally. There's people out, that but. go there. They go strapped, dude. They're like, they're like, boom. They're boom. Like this is ours. Yeah, but what I will give them is like if you can set up a pretty sweet spread there, like it's probably pretty co- like it's probably pretty cool. Yeah, they're probably like at home right now. Those same people are like, <laughs> Ravinia is the best thing that's ever happened to Dude, us. They're planning their next. They're assault. probably going tomorrow. Yeah, they're, they're probably going to bed today. right now, dreaming of Ravinia for tomorrow. <laughs> they're gonna get there with their checkered picnic table yep. and yep. every checkered. all these like. Dude, they're not checkered, bro. They got they're beyond checkered. Whatever they got, like their <laughs> they their got China. Embroidered. They got embroidered fucking, like, you know, yeah, cloth. They, yeah. They're like, they're not checkered. Well, all checkered. the power to them, man. They're really nice people up there. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy for the people <laughs> who enjoy it. I don't. E, D, G, B, E, D, G,
think I was way out of tune that last song. Whatever we just did, I just tuned my guitar. And it's in tune now, but it was totally not in tune. Ah, oh, that's horrible. You know, Poe going in the pit, somebody who's skinny, bony guy. A friend of mine, actually. Is that what you call it? Poe going, po going in the pit. Poe going, yeah. <laughs> I don't know we call it a pit. Even, right? Is that what it was like? Uh, is that what you called you moshing? Yeah, yeah, it was when you go up and down instead of sideways. And you just go slam around in the in a pit somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Po going wait, in the wait. pit. So wait, <laughs> mosh pit like like just It could get us, a little scary. For Chicago, it's like it's called jacking. Like okay. just letting your body jack and just like Yeah, that's and just yeah. start pushing people. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. yeah. And that's the same as the yeah. skinhead the lot... skinheads like yeah, like well. da, da, da. That's and, a different and that's story like again. In Germany, right? they they didn't want they didn't. It was funny because when I lived out in uh, in Berlin, mm-hmm. it was like you know we start jacking, we start like dancing the way we dance in Chicago. Right. They're like yeah, and just start jumping around and pushing, and they're like yeah, you know we, we, we with our friends, like yeah, we're from Chicago. This is how we dance to this shit. In the club, <laughs> this and, is how we do it. And in the club, and everybody, like, hey, stop Sorry. now. And they make us like stop dancing like that. We're uh-huh. like, why? Well, what's going on? Like, yeah, that's that's like skinheads. They that's the way they dance. Oh. I'm like, what? Dancing tribal, right? How it's- serious, dude? When you're in Germany, like, you can't be at a club and even have a camera and take pictures of your experiences at the club. Uh-huh. In other words, you take a picture. With a normal iPhone, whatever, that's called surveillance. Wait, you, you don't, you can't no, take dude, pictures? They got, no, dude, they got laws against all that shit. because of, Because of what they went through, dude, with the German, the Nazis and all that. Dude, it's, it's serious, no more dude. fun for you. No more <laughs> selfies. No. We're, we're, we're going to have to get some uh, confirmation on this. If, there, if, oh, there's, anyone, no. if, if there's anyone okay. out there listening dude. who can confirm Gabe's dude, story that... Uh, dude. Dude, I yeah, got, we got, we got, got, a, we got, got a fact got, check. No going. cameras on I the cell DJ, phones. I got German. DJs. I got friends who are out there, and they're like, "Dude, I just spun at this club, and then like, no policy, no cameras, no pictures. Sorry, I can't show you how dope the fucking party was." You I can't. mean, that's what we're dealing with right now. You know, when people are getting caught doing all sorts of stuff yeah. on social media, the, because everyone's reason, you're right. Hold on, because everyone's like, everyone's always shooting. Video or taking photos all the time. So, right. but in Germany, the reason they banned it was because of what they went through. Okay, we have some confirmation of oh, 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 here anti- we go. Uh, Mitch did some oh. research. Okay, here Mitch, we go. Mitch. No photo policy in clubs. Um, it says places like Munich are much more conservative than maybe Berlin. Berlin, but they say there's three main policies. Loose. It stands on the door if you're entering the club, but if you're inside, you'll see people taking pictures. No one cares or says something. That's a prime example of trying to behave cool as, as a club, and honestly, blah, 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 blah. Okay, medium. Uh, Robert Johnson in Frankfurt, Watergate in Berlin. You won't get kicked out for snapping a picture, but if someone on the staff sees you, they'll ask you to delete it. Pretty strict. Wow. wow. So, so yeah. And then they, they strict. Have, they Prime have example signs. Is, they have signs with uh, the with the circle. They and mention the cross and the camera. Kid Cat Club, obviously fetish scene clubs. Bergheim. All these clubs have dark rooms, so you can guess why they don't want pictures. Yeah. Bergheim. You'll see Bergheim in there. So it's just clubs, or right? is it just like a general kind of thing in Germany where like? They, and they show a photo of cameras. Dude, cameras will be covered up. They actually put this gummy red tack over the. Um, over the lens of your iPhone. Wow. Wow. It's, it's surveillance, dude. It's called surveillance, nah, dude. So I, at least more, more, more of a culture than we're used to. They don't we? want the, what their country went through with everything they went through. They, the last thing they want is to surveillance people. So that's why they're like against all that shit, dude. They, you dude, know, it they seems were there. on the list of. Uh, they were there. Bad things the Nazis did, you know. Yeah, exactly. Photos are just kind of high on, you know, not super as high on the list as some of the other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> experimentation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, yeah, a couple of the other things. But like, hey, fuck that photo, man. Just get it out of here. Yeah. None of this Nazi photo shit. <laughs> So there's some. No, that makes sense. Oh, some dude. Stuff like, it's crazy. Dude. Yeah, you're not. You can let yeah. loose and not yeah. worry about someone snapping a photo of you looking stupid or. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty crazy, I'm dude. Down with it. The yeah. clubs I went.
I'm getting the I'm oh, getting I'm getting the look, 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 I'm getting the red light sign. We we got we got Birdie in the house. Oh oh, Birdie's coming down. She made it. She's like, would you guys just get out of my house already? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so this has been uh, an episode of The New Signal. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, <laughs> check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever podcasts can be found. Uh, please give us a rate and review. Give us some five-star five star ratings. You can reach me at nat at the com or at nat sodi on Twitter and Instagram. And... Uh, All right. Take care.